just looking at the schedule as a whole, we talked about the people that are predicting 11, 12, 13 wins. And it's like, yeah, because it's so easy to predict, which lets you know it's, dude, that's the NFL. It's not easy, right? So there's going to be trap games. There's going to be trap games. And it could start off right away being a trap game against the, the Tennessee Titans. And like you said, our biggest concern will be very obvious in week one whether Matt Eberflus and this coaching staff has this team ready to go. A a hot start is so important here because, like I said, you cannot sit there and just repeat the same mistakes over and over. One of the big mistakes last year was going 0-4. That just Mm -hmm. killed you. It really killed you. And you have a pretty tough matchup against Houston in week two. I said the same line last year. It's week one, and it's already a must-win game. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and that's why we all multiple podcasts that's, and it's funny that you say really that. yeah no mm-hmm. i said it last year i'm gonna say it again this year because it's every year man this is the nfl this is how it is it's just it's tough man every week's a damn mu- must win week like but yeah you got to come out ready to go you cannot come out I mean, slow and, and not come away with a victory against this team i mean that would be so deflating as deflating as last year's week one loss to the Packers. If not, I would I mean, argue it'd be maybe worse. more. Yeah, maybe more. Exactly. And so you just can't, can't have this fan base loop through that again. I mean, they not only that, Paulie, you know, but like we, we, you've, you've been preaching this more than anyone I've ever heard. You, it's all about a, a decent start this year. And like we said, Iberflus isn't on the hot seat necessarily, even if you go like, you know, one and three or something like that. I don't think, but I mean, what the hell else are you supposed to do? Right. That would be like, so it, rough, man. You got to stay around 500. You do. So, but I mean, quickly, everybody's got, and the big, one of my biggest like paranoia is about this week and this game is that everybody has it penciled in as a win. And I just hope that everybody's right rather than it being hype because every year, Mitch Trubisky, number one vote for MVP in Vegas, Justin Fields, number one vote you know, bet in, uh, in Vegas for MVP, the bears always, it's one of the best fan bases. It's one of the most hype fan bases. And we're always ready to just kind of crown them for anything that we see that's mediocre to decent, but you look at the schedule really quickly and you're scared of Owen four last year and how it ruined the whole season, Tennessee. If you don't win, you're probably not winning against the Texans. I would say that's like a 95 percenter. It's probably one of the few games that you can pencil in as a guaranteed loss. Then you have the Colts who knows, but they might be good if everybody is predicting them. They won nine games with uh, Gardner Minshew. So it's not a bum team either. And then you got the Rams week four. Depending on how well these teams start and who starts off bad, you have a 0-4 start staring you in the face, 1-3 and start staring you in the face again. And if that doesn't put you on the hot seat, I don't know what's going to put you on the hot seat. And here I am making like hype videos nightly, <laughs> like yeah, every yeah. night, hype, hype, hype. So it just is what it is, right? Um, yeah, I, we don't. We're not Debbie Downers. We're dude. We're so we're so excited. We want to start like four and zero, oh, but it's just not we've realistic. Seen, we've lived through moments where it just hasn't happened, though. It's, yeah. This is what, and I keep saying this all off season too. I'm gonna live and die by this damn phrase. I, I'm tired of saying I want changes. I want to see changes. Like you keep preaching change. Okay. Then come out, start hot. Let's go beat the Packers this year. Like these things need to happen to me. And it's more important than like the, the season total wins. It really is. Like I said, I, I haven't had nine wins, but I haven't getting there in the best way possible for me to be Mm -hmm. as happy as I could possibly be. And I go back to the impact of a quarterback, everybody. Yeah. Even the best lined up for you, man. Even the best coaches, Andy Reid, it still took him 20 years to win one. And it wasn't until he got Patrick Mahomes that he won one. We look at Tom Brady, you know, Bill Belichick's known as the greatest head coach. Second Tom Brady leaves. Doesn't win one again. It's just, man, Coaching can do so much for you if it's amazing. And I know we don't have tier one coaching <laughs> talent right here. I th- This has got to be the year of Caleb. And my God, if he is anything as advertised, David, he will carry this thing. I mean, can you tell how, how PTSD we are? How scarred we are? 
No, this is normal to me. This is like the daily. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else can tell. Uh, this No, this, this, this is just, I'm fucked, man. I need this to work, man. <laughs> yeah. I need I it. <laughs>